I was watching spooky videos. I ended up getting scared. What was the one that tipped the scales? Hinterkaifeck, the farm. Ooh. What is that? <laughs> uh, I've definitely <laughs> talked about it before. Uh, it was a... It's a very unsolved old murder. <laughs> the Hinterkaifeck murders occurred on the evening of March 31st, 1922, in which six inhabitants of a small Bavarian farmstead uh, were killed by an unknown assailant. The six victims, Andreas Gruber, 63 years old, Kazilia Gruber, 72 years old, their widowed daughter, Victoria Gabriel, 35, hot, Victoria's children, Kazilia, seven, hot, <laughs> and Joseph, two, and the maid, Maria Baumgartner, 44. They were all killed. Huh? Yep. It's an old name. I know some Baumgartners. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. They were all found decapitated. Nice. Matt, let me tell you something about this. Yeah, I want to hear about this. It's just a, a family lived in this farm. Mm-hmm. All right. So there's a widow. Her husband died in World War I. Oh. Maybe. What? All right, maybe. That's one theory. But on record, he died in yeah, World War he's I. he's not there. He's a German. She had two children with him, I think, and then a newborn that was allegedly with her father. They were what? accused of incest. So there's a, a, a two-year-old <clears> baby <throat> that now the girl and her three kids live with their parents. And one and they very just, happy father. <laughs> and a very loving 67-year-old father that's oh, oh. little Joe Biden oh, kicking around. Really? So she was living at her parents' farm because yes. her husband was at war. Because her husband died at war. Died at Allegedly. War. They never found his body. Imagine that dad just being like... Jackpot. Why don't you come stay with us? <laughs> <laughs> Strange things began to occur in and around Hinterkaifeck sometime shortly before the attack. Six months before the attack, the family maid quit. Mm-hmm. She was like, it's too spooky here. It has been widely claimed that her reason for leaving was that she heard strange sounds in the attic and believed that the house was haunted. Ooh. Every maid, to be fair, thinks the house they're living in is haunted, but go on. And it's good to see that that's not just <laughs> over-religious Hispanic maids. Leading up to it, this the old man noticed some some tracks in the snow leading from the woods into their house, Ooh. into their barn. And not coming back out. He reported it to his friends. He was like, somebody... And there's no tracks leading out. So. What? And then they, the, the previous maid quit because she said the house was haunted. They could hear footsteps in the attic. So many, Somebody was up in the attic so much that the guy went and checked. And he didn't find anyone. He, but they heard some footsteps. He found a newspaper from Munich. They didn't even live there. What? He was like... And he asked the postman. He was like, did you drop this? And he was like, no one orders that around here. I think somebody's just living on your property the there's, a, there's a ghoul on your property that likes the news the Munich yeah. times <laughs> yeah. then one day uh, somebody or a group of people or a ghoul mm-hmm. lured like the family one by one out into the barn and smashed all their heads with a pick what and then went into the house smashed the two year old's head with the pick in his crib Yikes. and then killed the maid in the house and then but you know this is in the 20s no one's coming by the house yeah so one guy walked by the house like a few days later noticed lights were on and the the oven was burning somebody was somebody was clearly still living in there uh and that's it what <laughs> <laughs> no there's more but it was like that's a spooky uh, abrupt ending yeah very abrupt i say and then that's it what but um <clears throat> no, no they found a lot of spooky it? stuff the, the investigators know somebody fed the animals for like three days and like, it's gotta be that hus, there. It's gotta be that hus, dude. He came back and saw that boy. And said, then after oh, World War II, man. after World War II, some some German soldiers reported that one of the Soviet general or one of the Soviet guys in the prison camp, yeah, one of the guards claimed he was that guy and that he did it. What? That it was the father that allegedly died in World War One. He escaped to the Soviet Union, killed his family, then came back to kill his family. He's probably like, guys, I fuck you won't believe it. And he was like, what the? F- my dad, f- my, my dad- wife. Her, her dad fucked her. I'm gonna kill everybody. Oh, her pick. dad. Her dad. Her. That's even worse, right? Yeah, it was insane. Yeah, not definitely. your dad. <laughs> I mean, if you had to choose, if my dad <laughs> smashed my girlfriend, I'd be like, "You thought I was dead? That's fair." Thanks. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for stoking. You the did flame. the right thing. Thanks for stoking the flames. She needs this Gillis dick. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Damn. Think about hearing footsteps above you and being like, "That's probably nothing." And then one night, 
Oh. You and your pals get beheaded by your... Well, that's, what, that's why you shouldn't have sex with your daughter or your dad. Yeah. And Sorry. you shouldn't when your husband's at war. Because he might come back and live in the woods for about a year Maybe. behind your house. And then one night, finally, he's like, all right, it's time. It's very possible, dude. Especially, like, getting the newspaper from other places. Like, they found newspapers from, like, Munich. Oh, yeah. And he was, like, reading the paper, hanging out. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude, that's fucking terrifying. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. A little pocket knife. <laughs> <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> 